Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And as you can probably tell by the title, this video is going to be on a YouTuber called Mortis Media. I want to start off this video by thanking Mort personally. I don't know if he'll be watching this, but I want to thank him personally for the shout out that he gave this channel the other day. So for a quick background for those of you guys who don't know, I did a video where I actually contacted 100 YouTubers and in that video, Mortis Media was one of only two YouTubers who got back to me. So what I thought I would do, I thought that I would Instagram message him in the link to the the video just to obviously make him aware that he's been a part of one of my videos and once again he responded and he said that he'll check it out so at this point honestly I was just thinking that he might have a little look at it later and it would be nice for him to see it but I didn't think it was going to really go anywhere further but then I woke up the next day and after I'd gone for my morning run I then come back log on to YouTube as I normally do and I just see all of these notifications and the smile that just come on my face because of that I thought one of them had got a lot of traction from whatever the reason but then when I actually saw the comments that people were leaving about Mortis and then put two and two together. I had a look on Instagram, I had a look on Twitter. I was like, where's he shouted me out? Where's he done it? The last place I actually looked was YouTube and I couldn't believe it when I saw my video there. It was just one of the greatest feelings ever and it was a bit of a fanboy moment if I'm honest because I actually watched near enough every Mortis media video. When I saw that I was featured on his community page, it just did mean quite a lot. So thanks for that Mortis. If you're watching this, I really, really appreciate it. So if you don't know much about Mortis media, he does a lot of scary stories and many different stories from his reddit that people have obviously submitted to him and as you guys will probably know who watch him or have seen what he's done for this channel and how he's obviously helped me out by giving a shout out you'll know he just is a kind person he has pretty decent music taste and he plays the piano as well which is obviously another positive of course so i just want to let you know one part of this video is going to be reading one of mortis's stories one scary story of his own which i don't think many people will have heard but i just thought it'd be interesting to show his story because he's obviously normally narrating other people's stories so i thought i'd try and narrate his and see what you guys think about it but because we've come this far with mortis media in this channel i just love to work with him in the future on a project together now i've had a few ideas for me and mort and what we could maybe do i mean the most obvious is probably collabing on a video obviously as you guys will see i'm starting to do a narration on this channel not that the commentary is going anywhere but the narration is definitely getting implemented in at the same time but another idea that i had between me and mortis and i haven't seen him do this ever is exploring a band and places now this isn't an idea for the current time this is sometime in the future it's all speculative we don't know what the future is going to hold but if everything works out exploring abandoned places would obviously also add something to his channel because it really does still fit in line with his scary story horror channel it doesn't stray away from that but it would also really help mortis develop fans who maybe like him more for his personality than the person who he is instead of just people who watch him for his stories i mean obviously there's loads of ways he can do it he can do more q and a's videos like that which are more personal but i just thought that would be one good suggestion to put out there that would be great to do sometime in the future it might be a long time but it's just an idea for now but i've heard him say in the past that he's scared of needles that's like his number one thing that he, that scares him you know what? i'd always be there to protect him if there was any needles or anything like that in the abandoned places and then obviously as i've mentioned collabing on a project's pretty self-explanatory or on a video but i was really trying to think of something that would benefit like both of us because i just feel at the current moment this channel is not big enough to like give something in return but i appreciate absolutely everyone who's took the time to subscribe and then obviously watch all of my videos i really appreciate that so just before we get into mort's story i just want to go over a few little factors about him in case you guys haven't checked out his channel already and haven't seen any of his videos in the past you can just tell that mort is just such a smiling and happy person like i've seen in his face reveal video he just seems happy at everything and it's so nice to see and, and in a weird way you just would not expect it from obviously the nature of his channel being scary horror stories and then you just see this really nice person behind the camera it's great to see which is maybe why a lot of people didn't want to see his face reveal because they didn't want it to ruin the spooky vibe of the video with obviously such a nice person behind it so i just want to go over the three reasons why he's been so successful in the genre that he's gone down with his channel so the number one reason is the voice that he has i mean actually he didn't like his voice to start with i remember him saying but i just find it's very interesting and captivating i can't really describe it but he just is interesting and he captivates a good audience and i think he plays very well into the characters that are in the stories instead of just having one voice it's a very adaptable voice which plays into the different characters without just being very monotone the second reason is the style of videos that he does people just do seem to enjoy the longer form scary content instead of the 10 minute 15 minute videos i mean i know there's the odd person who gets away with it like mr nightmare but usually scary story videos do better in the algorithm if they're like an hour long which most of mort's videos are so 
the third reason why he's done so well is his personality. And what I mean by this more specifically is he genuinely wants his fans to have the best content that he can possibly produce. He doesn't just want them to have any old content. The quality on each story and each video is just unflawed and there's never really a mistake in his videos or his narration, which is great to see. But now it's time to get into the bit that you've probably all been waiting for, the story that I found of Mo. Now I did find this on a website, so I really do hope it is a story from Mo, but I'm sure it was a proper website and a legit interview. Hope you guys enjoy the story and without further ado, let's get into it. My then fiance, now wife and I, were walking down a long dark road in France to get home late at night. There was a light drizzle gently cascading from the black sky, only illuminated by the four dingy orange street lamps lining the half a mile walk back. It's quite late and there was no one else about but us. The only sound being that of the gentle rain and our footfalls as we try to make it back before we get too wet. As we are walking in the darkness and approaching the final street lamp, we hear an extremely chilling, demonic-sounding solitary laugh pierce through the cold winter air from a house on the left. The house in question, we thought was vacant, or at the very least hardly used. The real kicker is that there were no lights on in the house. It was pitch black. The laughter happened only once, and we had no clue who could have done it, or why. At that moment, fear overcame us, and we ran as fast as we could back to her house, hearts pounding as we slipped the key in the lock and frantically locking it behind us to assure ourselves we weren't being chased by a demonic entity. If we ever had to pass that house again, we ran past it. To the potential demonic entity, let's not meet again. Right, so I hope you enjoyed that story, and now I'm going to be talking about the future of this channel and what to expect from it. So for those of you guys who are used to my commentary style videos, they are not going anywhere, but I just want to start introducing narration style videos on scary stories, because I really do enjoy watching them myself, so I do feel like I'd enjoy producing them as well. But I have been definitely thinking over whether I'd like to start a second channel for this, and that's where I'm a bit stuck. Do you guys want to see scary story narrations on this channel, or would you like me to start a second channel for it? please do comment below because with help like that i can know what you guys want to see on this channel so please do feel free to let me know but to end this video i'll leave you with another scary story and this is one that i found particularly spooky and scary so that's why i've included it at the end of the video anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video and without further ado let's get into the scary story i've always been good friends with one of my cousins cole who's the same age as i am the two of us were not quite inseparable, but we always did get along very well with each other and were often found together, both in school as we'd wound up in the same class together throughout elementary school and outside of it. When we were 12 and in the 6th grade, I was hanging out with Cole on a Friday afternoon around the later part of May and we were psyched at the start of the weekend. We'd wound up at his house since he didn't live too far from me and at one point my mum called to say that our grandpa was in hospital. While the issue with our grandpa wasn't expected to be life-threatening, he was still being kept at the hospital overnight and both my parents and Coles were planning on staying with him and grandma at the hospital since my mum and her sister were the two of their siblings who lived close by. I was told that I was given the okay to stay at Cole's house for the night with Cole's 15-year-old brother Hunter being in charge while our parents were out. This was fine by us. I got along well enough with Hunter and he was never a bossy older brother slash cousin that some of my other friends had to put up with. We ordered out for pizza and enjoyed goofing off as boys our age tend to do. At around nine or so, there was a knock on the front door and Cole went to answer it. I was a bit curious as to who it could be at this time of night and so I watched from a way back. At the door were two older guys. They said that they were with the city and they were investigating reports about water pressure supposedly being bad in the neighbourhood. They asked Cole if his parents were home and when Cole said that they were unavailable at the moment, which we were told to say to strangers if our parents weren't home, the guys started asking a bunch of questions about how the water pressure was in the house and if they could come inside to check. Hunter came over at this point and politely told the guys that the water pressure was fine and perhaps they should move on to check other homes in the neighbourhood. The guys seemed reluctant to leave but turned and walked away after Hunter started closing the door. After the door was shut we looked at each other and shrugged but didn't think too much of it after that and went back to goofing off. 
Eventually, we decided to go to bed. Cole and Hunter shared a bedroom, and we all agreed that I'd sleep in there with them, rather than me hitting the sack on the couch or something like that, so that we could talk while we fell asleep, and Hunter grabbed a sleeping bag out of the camping supplies for me. When we got into their bedroom, they stripped down into their brief, and I remember Cole had mentioned to me once a while back that they had just started sleeping in their underwear. Since I hadn't originally planned on staying the night, I hadn't brought anything with me from home as far as overnight stuff, but since I wasn't in the mood to sleep in my clothes, I stripped down to my briefs as well, though I felt a bit embarrassed. Even though we were all guys there, they climbed into their beds and I quickly crawled into the sleeping bag. And after talking for a while about random stuff, we eventually fell asleep. Early the next morning, I got up because I had to pee, and so I quietly got out of my sleeping bag and went and did my business in the bathroom. On the way back to the bedroom, I heard something in the family room, which was on the opposite end of the house from the bedrooms and the particular bathroom that I was using. I didn't pay too much attention to it at the time, thinking it must be either Cole or Hunter, until I got back to the bedroom and realised that both of them were still there. Trying not to panic, I woke them and told them that I thought someone was in the house. They quietly followed me, and the moment we walked into the family room, we saw the two guys from the night before in there, and it was rather clear that they were robbing the place. One of them started moving towards us as he pulled out a wicked-looking knife. The three of us promptly raced to the front door, somehow managed to get it unlocked and open, and we fled outside. As luck would have it, a cop was driving by at that particular moment. We quickly flagged him down and told him about the two guys in the house. The cop called for backup and within a couple of minutes, several other cops were there and they proceeded to enter the house and after some searching, they caught the two guys. The cops figured out that the two guys must have entered from a window in the laundry room that had a broken latch and had probably targeted that house because, while it wasn't empty, they'd probably realised that there were no adults in there and figured that if we discovered them, we could be more easily dealt with than adults. To add insult to injury, while we were waiting outside while the cops searched the house, both to get these two guys and to make sure there was no one else with them, some of the neighbours came out to see what the commotion was about, and this included some kids who went to the same school as Cole and me, including a few who were actually in our 6th grade class with us. It was during that time that the three of us realised that we'd never had the chance to get dressed, so... Just like in the stereotypical nightmare, we had to stand outside in full view of everyone in just our briefs for what seemed like forever before being allowed back inside. When we went back to school on Monday, Cole and I had to put with more than a bit of snickering, stares and ribbon for the next few weeks until school ended for the summer. To the two burglars who decide to target our house, let's not meet again.